Good morning, artists, and welcome to Art Adventures Live. My name is Mr. Andy. I'm the studio programs manager here at Jaws and Art Museum, which means I get to make art with people like you that come and visit the museum. Art Adventures is a free drop-in program uh, that happens at the museum every Friday morning throughout the year. But during this time of COVID, of course, we're doing what we can to keep each other safe. So I'll bring Art Adventures to you each week uh, so you, we can make art together from the comfort of your own home. Each week, we will be inspired uh, by different artworks or artists from the galleries and create a masterpiece of your own together while learning how these artworks were made and what makes them special. For a full list of upcoming art adventures, including new adventures for August, visit jawsin.org. There you'll also find the a list of materials you'll need each week. And if you don't have materials ready today, a recording of today's video will be posted along with um, a Pinterest board and information about today's artist to the event page for today's adventure so you can follow along and make art when you have time. On today's art adventure, we're going to create a painting full of emotion and energy with the help from an artist from Jawsin's galleries named Michael Goldberg. Michael Goldberg was born in Bronx, in Bronx, New York in 1924. He began in formal art studies in 1938 at the age of 14. His studies were interrupted by the Second World War and he served as a US, where he served as a US paratrooper. New York City during, during and following World War II was an exciting place for artists. Artists from all over the world gathered in New York to escape the violence of war torn countries throughout Europe and Asia. These immigrant artists brought new ideas and perspectives about art. Many of these artists in New York created, created art as a means to, com to comment or to cope with the horrors of war in the world. A loosely affiliated group of young artists in New York that became known as the New York School embraced this new approach to, of interpreting the world through the artist's the artist, emotional response to it. The art made by these artists of the new school, the New York School, included painters, poets, and dancers, and is often today categorized as abstract expressionists. Abstract, ex abstract expressionists are less concerned about creating art that directly describes a subject, but, but are more interested in documenting the emotions and the interior thoughts of the artist about that subject. Instead of painting a picture of a tree, the artist might paint a picture of how they feel about that tree. Abstract express expressionists are interested in expressing themselves using abstract lines, colors, and shapes. When Michael Goldberg returned from the war, the New York School of Abstract Expressionists was gaining attention from newspapers, galleries, and museums. Artists from Joslin's galleries, like Hans Hoffman, and later Jackson Pollock, became well known for their purely abstract approach to art making and would help America become a leader for what was considered to be what was considered to be new and important art. This first generation of abstract expressionists shocked, uh, shocked lots of gallery visitors with huge canvases filled with wild brushstrokes and bold color, but sometimes no recognizable images. Many artists in the New York School in the 1940s and the 1950s painted purely abstract pictures, often on huge canvases. Artists like Jackson Pollock. William de Kooning and Hans Hoffman uh, uh, painted fast and loose, often using their entire body to slash at the canvas. Jackson Pollock became famous when he began to paint with his, canvases, uh, his canvas on the floor while he dripped paint from above as he walked and moved right on top of the picture he was painting. The energetic, the energetic abstract expressionists were labeled action painters as their paintings were full of action and the way, the way that they painted was full of movement. Other abstract expressionists within Joslin's collection expressed more serene emotions with large areas of color and steady line, like this picture by Helen Frankenthaler. Artists like Marth, Mark Rothko used color as a meditation for the viewer to consider their own emotions. Michael Goldberg became friends with many of this first generation of abstract expressionists and they helped him develop his own ideas as an artist in the 1950s and 60s. He embraced abstract expressionism fully and would paint mostly pure abstract pictures 
throughout his long career, all the way into the 2000s. Although the spotlight was on this first gener, although uh, the spotlight was mostly on this first generation of abstract expressionists, he continued their I their ideas along with other artists in New York. Michael Goldberg was most influenced by the action painters William, like William de Kooning and Jackson Pollock. Michael would use his whole body to swipe his brush across huge canvases, using bright uh, colors and paint to create lines that would sweep from the top to the bottom, from the left all the way to the right of the canvas. In addition to using a paintbrush, Michael would often use an oil stick to create uh, marks on the canvas. An oil stick is kind of like, uh, is kinda like a, a big crayon made of oil paint or an oil, a, a big, a giant oil pastel. Michael would use his oil stick to draw lines right onto the canvas, sometimes on top of his brush strokes. Other times he would paint on top of the lines that he drew with the oil stick, filling the entire canvas with lines of all kinds, like, like we see in the picture from our gallery. Michael Goldberg loved jazz music. He loved the jazz music that was popular after World War II and in the 1950s. He and other artists in New York would spend long nights in cafes and bars listening to jazz music and, and, or, and talking about jazz and painting. Jazz music is special because of the improvisation. Improvisation, it allows mus musicians, uh, because of the improvisation, that it allows the musicians that create it. Trumpet players, drummers, and even singers can do whatever they want within the framework of the song, playing any notes or even making up words to express themselves, oftentimes without any conscious thought. A pure and immediate expression of an idea from the artist's brain into physical art. Michael Goldberg often listened to jazz music as he painted in his studio, and you can imagine how he might have made these lines in his paintings as if he were dancing to the song on the record player. This painting by Michael Goldsberg at Jazz and Art Museum made in, was made in 1998, late in his career. It's really big, almost, it's almost a square, and it's nine, nine, uh, bigger than, between nine and nine, it's about nine feet across. <laughs> it's a big painting. Nine foot square. It's nine foot square. It's a big painting, and it has one of the longest titles at the museum, too. This artwork, the title of this artwork is called to be closely written on a small piece of paper, which folded into a tight lozenge, might fit any girl's locket. That is a long title, and it makes me think about the way you might feel when you write a special note for someone, especially someone you might have romantic feelings for, or the way you might feel when you receive a special note from a special person. A note that you might fold up extra small to pass to them secretly at school, or a note that someone might fold small like a lozenge, to fit inside a locket to wear around your neck or near your heart. <clears throat> some of the brush strokes in this line, in this pic, some of the brush strokes and lines in this painting make me feel a bit nervous. Other lines, other lines are happy, delighted, infatuated. Maybe some of these lines are scared. You and I are gonna make lines and brush strokes of our own as we create a painting like an abstract expressionist. We're gonna challenge ourselves to think about different emotions as we, uh, that we want to express as we create a purely abstract painting full of energy and action. Before we begin, let's take a look at the materials we'll need for today's art adventure. Remember, those of you that need materials can grab materials for, every, for, every, for each week's adventure out front of the museum every Thursday. Every Thursday, you can come to the museum's atrium entrance and find a bin full of bags just like this with all the materials you'll need for each week's adventure. New bags will be, get, will be put out next week for our August adventures. Today, let's take a look at our, our description sheet for the material list. We will need a big piece of white paper to create our emotional lines. You might, we'll need, we'll use a black crayon like our oil stick. You might even want to use your white crayon, like our oil stick. If you have crayons of your own, you might want to use crayons of different colors 
like uh, like Michael Goldberg uses his oil stick. And then also we'll use our watercolor paints to create expressionist brush strokes. So grab your watercolor paints, a paintbrush or two, and a cup of water. These are the, these are the materials I'm going to use today. I also grab I also grab some oil pastels. If you have oil pastels available, you might choose to use oil pastels. And I grabbed from our supplies here in our studio a big oil stick. This is this is an oil stick similar to what Michael Goldberg used to draw on the painting here in, at Jaws and Art Museum. This is this is a like a big crayon made of of oil paint that we can draw with like a crayon. So let's let's begin and let's let's begin before we begin to draw and paint our lines and our brush strokes. Let's brainstorm in your mind. Turn on your imagination. Let's think about some different emotions. And as we think about each emotion in your mind, imagine a line. Draw a line in your in your mind's eye up here in your brain. Draw a line for each emotion. So you might even you might think about a memory. You might, if, we, if we're thinking about a happy line, you might think about a happy memory and what kind of line that might, you might create to describe a happy emotion. If, you th if, we're, think if we're thinking about a <clears throat> exciting memory, you might think about the different kinds of lines you think that you would use to describe it. Exciting, to describe excitement, the emotion of being filled full of, with lots of energy. So... As we think about each of, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to challenge you to think about these different emotions. So I'll give you a word to think about. And as you think about that word, I'm going to turn around, I'm going to turn my easel around. And then we'll draw that line. You'll draw your emotional line at home. And I'll show you the emotional line that I draw here at the museum. So let's, let's close our eyes for a moment. Close your eyes for a moment and imagine in your mind's eye. Let's start with... Let's start with an emotion. Let's start with the word nervous. Close your eyes and then imagine a line in your mind's eye that's nervous, a nervous line. Sometimes when I'm nervous, you might even get a little shaky. You might start and then stop. You might go slow and careful and cautious. So I'm going to grab a crayon. We're going to start with our crayon, your oil pastel, and you can choose the color that you want to begin with. I'll start with my black crayon for a nervous line. And you can decide if your nervous line needs to go from the left to the right, from the bottom to the top, maybe from one corner to the other at a diagonal. I'm gonna draw my nervous line now that I can see it in my mind's eye. It might start and stop again, kind of a little, maybe a little shaky from the left to the right. Maybe it's gonna come back even from the right side to the left side for a nervous line. Draw yourself a nervous line I'm going to draw several. We want to fill, we're going to fill our entire canvas, our piece of paper, with all kinds of lines. All kinds of lines, just like Adam or Michael Goldberg. His friends call him Mike. So we might call him, we might call him Mike. There's, how about, there's some nervous lines on my piece of paper. Draw some nervous lines of your own. Hopefully you can, uh, and if you have any ideas for emotions that we want to draw together, you can type those in the comments below. Think of some words that we can challenge ourselves to draw expressive lines for, those, for each of those words. How about another word? Here comes another word. Close your eyes. I'm going to lay it on you. Next word is surprised. How would you draw a surprise line? Surprise. Sometimes when I'm surprised, I'm shocked. You're maybe even startled. These are words that are similar to surprise. This time I might, I'm going to draw this one with a color. So I might look at my crayons, and I might even choose a color that I think is especially good for describing the way that I feel when I'm surprised. When I'm surprised, maybe, maybe green. And I'm going to close my eyes and think about being surprised again. Think maybe about a time I was surprised. Sometimes surprises are good. Sometimes surprises... Uh, are not as good. You think about how you might feel when you feel surprised. This line might have to go up and down from, I'm thinking this one might go up and down, maybe even come out and all around, radiate 
some of the, the I might even need to have a thick line. So I'm going to break my crayon and use the side of that line to make some some of these surprise lines big and thick. <clears throat> I have some big green surprise lines. Here comes another word. How about the word proud? I bet sometimes you feel proud when you do something good for other people or when you make a, a work of art that you want to share with people, you might feel proud. Close your eyes and imagine how you feel when you are proud. I might pick a color that makes me feel proud, maybe yellow sometimes. It's a nice, happy, proud color. I'm going to close my eyes and imagine what kind of lines would I want to draw to describe proud. When I'm proud, sometimes I, that's when you, oftentimes when we're, when we're feeling proud, you might stand up tall, right? Tall and straight. So I might take my yellow and do some big tall lines. Remember, we want to fill our whole canvas. Michael Goldberg will make his lines stretch from the top to the bottom, from the left to the right. Maybe lots of big, tall. Some of these lines might be extra thick or wide. Draw some proud, some proud lines. Let's let's use let's use our uh, use our drawing tools for another line or two, and then we'll begin to add some brush strokes. We'll use our paintbrush to create brush strokes, which are like making lines with paint. How about I'll give my oil stick a try for our next line. Our next line. This next line we're going to draw is an excited line. Sometimes when you're excited, you might be in, you might might be anticipating something, something exciting that's coming in the future. You might be excited about something that's happening in that very moment. But what kind of lines would you draw when you're excited? Close your eyes and imagine those lines. Lines, excited lines can be can be maybe sometimes even be a, a bit wild. You might, excited lines might be like loop the loop. You're so excited, you might want to jump off the walls and do backflips and things. I'm going to use my big oil stick. If you have an oil pastel, that's similar to an oil stick. And when I use my oil stick, I like to push really hard to make some of these lines extra bold and thick. Maybe like that, big excited lines. Look at all the different lines we've used already. We can keep, I think we can come up with some more. Let's do one more before we begin to paint. Let's think about some happy lines. So we did nervous lines. Some of the, our, then we, start, we did our green surprise lines, our yellow proud lines, and our loop-de-loop -loop excited lines. How about some really happy lines? And I'm, this, for this one, I'm going to use this bright green, neon green oil stick. You can decide, look at your crayons or use your black crayon even, and think about what kind of line is very excited or happy. These are our happy. We want to do some happy ones. And happy, from sometimes when I think about happy, I think about soft, maybe pillowy lines. Or maybe even some short lines that go all over the place. Maybe I need to use diff a couple different colors. So then these short lines might even look like happy confetti flying all throughout my expressionist, my expressionist painting. So we've done a lot of drawing of lines. Now let's, let's practice painting some lines. Grab your oil pastels when you're ready, or grab your watercolor painting, watercolor paint when you're ready. In a cup of water, I'm going to use my big watercolors since I'm painting on a big piece of paper. And I'm going to use a big brush. So you, uh, you'll use your paints the same way. So we drew our nervous line, surprise line, proud line, excited line, happy line. How about, well, you, now we're going to use our paint brush to make brush strokes. And each brush stroke is, going, is a line. And so we're going to continue to think about lines and we'll use our paint brush to record that line onto our paper. This next line, after our, let's do a hopeful line. Think about a hopeful line. Close your eyes. Think about a line that you makes you feel hopeful, optimistic, happy, 
and pleased for the future. Think about maybe a color. I'm going to use purple for this one. In a hopeful line, I might might be kind of from the hopeful line that I'm envisioning is sort of a wavy line moving up maybe up from the bottom when you're hopeful you're often maybe thinking about starting in one place and ending in another sometimes starting down low but hope can bring you back up right so we'll bring this up to the left side and when I'm painting, I'm, I want to try to think about those action painters. Michael Goldberg. I might even think about some hopeful music, some jazz music, and th think about my brush as, as almost like it's dancing on my easel. So if you are at home and you're painting today, you might even choose to put your piece of paper, you might tape it onto the refrigerator, or tape it onto a, a wall, carefully, and stand back, and then use your whole body like an action painter, and move your arm from the left to the right. You might even turn on some music and dance around with your paintbrush to paint like Michael Goldberg, William de Kooning, and Jackson Pollock, and others. So there's our, our big hopeful purple brush strokes. Now how about a, a, a line that's a little bit it's different than hopeful? But uh, this is an emotion that all of us feel from time to time. Let's think about the word angry. Think about what, when you've been angry. And what kind of lines might you, close your eyes, and imagine what kind of lines you can create for anger, anger, anger or frustration, maybe even rage. Close your eyes and think about what those lines might look like. So I'm gonna imagine some anger lines, and I might grab red. Sometimes I'm feeling heated when I'm angry like red. So I'm going to paint some big slash, I might even slash and attack the easel with some big anger lines like an action painter. Careful to keep the paint on your canvas, but practice some movement. Some anger lines. Just two more. Can we do two more? Or how about one more? We'll do one more. This last line we'll use, we'll think about the word uncertain. Uncertain. These are, these are the times when you might, you don't know what's going to happen next. When's the time that you were uncertain? Think about uh, the other ways that you feel when you are uncertain. If you don't know what's happening that next, you might be anxious or even worried. What kind of marks might you make if you were anxious or worried? Things were uncertain. You didn't know where things were headed. What kind of lines might you make? What kind of colors might you choose? And we can paint right on top of all of those lines that we drew. If you used your white crayon, some of those lines are starting to appear. We're using our wet paint like we've done before to create waxy resists. So we've practiced lots of different expressive lines and brush strokes together, using those lines and brush strokes to tell people the different ways that, the different way, the different emotions that we feel. We practice several emotions together, but you can think about the next paint, next time you create an abstract expressionist painting, you think about emotions that are unique yours. Think about how you feel. Think about special times in your life or the times that you felt, even the times that you have felt sad and the times that you felt ha happy and how you could use art and those elements of art to express those different emotions. Just like those abstract expressionists here at Joslyn and the next time that you are here at Jazz and Art Museum, I hope that you'll stop in and find that big picture, that big picture with the long title by, by Michael Goldberg, and stop and look and see if you can find happy lines or excited lines or nervous lines, lines that, uh, brush strokes that, that help create a sense of movement and action. 
And the museum will be open very soon again. When are we open in there, Miss Jennifer? Seventh. The seventh for members? For the general public on the seventh. Okay. Members for fifth and sixth. So those of you that are members of the Jocelyn Art Museum, and it's not too late to join now, you can come and visit us on the fifth and the sixth of August, and we'll be open to the rest of our friends on the seventh of August. Check out the website. Our hours are limited, and we have special procedures so that we make sure that we keep each other safe. But thank you for making art with me today. Don't forget to share your finished artworks by posting images to our Facebook event page for today's art adventure, and follow us uh, on the social medias for to get updates for about all of our art from afar. As we as we open the museum galleries, we'll continue to bring you virtual experiences uh, so that we can make art together online with art adventures, but also virtual studio classes um, for teens, adults, and youth. So I'll catch you next week here for another Art Adventures. Thanks for making art with me. Adios, artists.